Welcome to the historic Mabel Tainter Theater, the 15th most beautiful theater in the world. Before we begin, let me give you a little history of the Tainter family. Andrew Tainter was a lumber baron and the father of Mabel Tainter. He came to this area in 1845 and became a silent partner in the Knapp Stout Lumber Company. The mill operated for 43 years and closed in 1901. In the 1870s, the Knapp Stout Lumber Company was the largest lumber company in the world. Andrew's first wife, Mary Poskins Goose, was a member of the Ojibwe tribe, and they had a common law marriage for nine years and had five children. Only two of those children lived to adulthood. Andrew's wife, Mary, felt out of place in the predominantly white community of Menominee and eventually decided to return to her tribe, and the children remained with him. Andrew hired a governess. Bertha Lucas Lejeure, who was a widow with two children. Andrew and Bertha married in 1861, and together they had five children, three of whom lived to adulthood. Mabel was the third child, a twin, who died at the age of 19 from a ruptured appendix. Mabel loved the arts, was an avid reader, and a proficient pianist. With the support and encouragement of the Reverend Henry Doty Maxson, Bertha and Andrew decided to build a living memorial to their daughter, Mabel. The Mabel Tainter was built in 1889. It is known as a jewel box theater. It has three distinctive architectural styles. The first one we see is known as Richardson Romanesque. It's stately, noble with turrets and curved arches over the windows. The front of the steps is a stylized carving representing the bow of a boat. It was designed by Harvey Ellis. The building is constructed of sandstone, brought from a quarry in Dunville, which is 20 miles south of Menominee. Each stone is six to seven tons and was individually carved and placed by over 200 stonemasons and bricklayers who built the theater in 16 months at a cost of $105,000. The main archway is 13 individually hand carved pieces of sandstone with an elaborate intricate leaf pattern along with the name of the theater and the year it was built. As we enter into the main entrance, we see the exquisite chandelier. It was originally oxidized silver with opalescent glass. <laughs> A custodian was tired of polishing the silver, so he spray painted it blue. And as part of the 1959 restoration, it was sent to the Twin Cities and brass plated and sealed. The ceiling is hand stenciled in a design called Luna Crista, meaning of the moon. The wood is quarter sawn oak. The windows on each side of the door are lead crystal and rose quartz, which were created by Tiffany Glass. The life-size portrait of Mabel was painted by William Cogswell and is called a death portrait as it was painted three years after Mabel's death with her sister Fanny standing in as the model for the body. Mabel's face was added using the photograph in the blue room. Overall, the portrait is seven foot by 10 foot and the frame is gold leaf hand-carved oak. After it was cleaned, it took six people to lift it back on the wall. The stacks room was actually designed to be fireproof to protect the 3,000 library books that the Tainters donated to get the library started. Note the heavy steel door with its filigree design on the edges. The fireplace is made of Mexican onyx. It was hand-cut and polished in Mexico, transported here and assembled. No two pieces are alike. Above the fireplace is the original incandescent lighting that Edison invented. They are different sizes because they are hand-blown glass bulbs. The walls, ceiling beams, and large round table are made of Honduran mahogany. The floors are Italian marble. The light fixture over the table is original, with the top globes gas and the lower globes electric. First electric lights in Menominee were installed at the Knapstout Company Lumber Mill in 1883. There is a large radiator in the center of the table. Doors are a quarter sawn oak with detailed hinges and doorknobs. The portrait is of Ruth and Mabel Tainter and was painted by William McMasters. Ruth is pictured in the rose colored dress. She died of smallpox at the age of eight shortly after the painting was completed. McMasters didn't sign the portrait but instead included a self portrait of himself in the book on Mabel's lap. The painting on the north wall was painted by Jacob Miller, a local artist, and is entitled Lovers on Meadow Hill, and is indicative of the lumber camp and mill pond. The blue room was the ladies' sitting room used during intermission and theater events. 
The ladies waited in this room while their escorts took the horses and carriages to the stable behind the theater. The circular water radiator used to heat the room is still in use, and the light fixture is original. The three portraits are of Andrew and Bertha's children that live to adulthood. Louis, the oldest, Fanny, the youngest, and Mabel. When Andrew died, he lay in state in this room. Andrew was a very powerful man, and all the schools in Dunn County were closed so that all the school children could come and pay their last respects. Originally, the walls were all hand-stenciled in fresco, meaning that the stencil was laid into the fresh plaster to create more texture. The original paint for the stencil was calcimine paint with egg white and dry pigments added. The restoration was done in oils to ensure permanence and make cleaning easier. There is not one stitch of wallpaper in the building. The blue room and the rose room, which is known as the men's parlor, are painted those colors for a specific reason. The blue room is a south-facing room with direct sunlight, so it is painted a cool color. The rose room is a north-facing room without much direct sunlight, so it is painted a warmer color. The memorial windows give the birth and death dates of Andrew and Bertha Tainter. These windows were designed by William Nash, who worked for Tiffany Glass at one time. There are interesting colors, designs, and textures in the windows. As you enter the theater, you move into the third style of architecture, influenced by the Moorish design found in Spanish culture, incorporating the eight-pointed star, fretwork, medallions, and archways. All the wood in the theater is hand-carved white pine from local forests. The opera seats are the originals, and they recline. Originally, there were four different sizes, small, medium, large, and extra large, and you bought your seat for $100. They were designed so that the aisles could remain straight as the seats span out. The theater was also the Unitarian Church, so the seats had hymnal racks on the back of the seats as well as a rack for hats under the seats. The tainter sat in the upper left box seat. The Reverend Henry Doty Maxson sat in the upper right box seat. Their relatives and friends were seated in the other boxes. Some unique features of the theater are the butterfly curtain on stage is the only manually operational one in the United States and used to be operated by hemp ropes backstage. The theater is referred to as a hemp house because all the backstage rigging was once hemp rope and controlled manually. The stage floor has four trap doors. The orchestra pit is often covered by a thrust stage to allow for more staging opportunities. The steer and turner Cracker pipe organ is located in the left lower box. It was manufactured in Springfield, Massachusetts, and was installed after the Mabel Tainter was dedicated in 1889. It has 1,595 pipes and 25 stops. It's made of hand-carved and polished mahogany and cherry and cost $5,000 in 1889. Pipes vary in size from 2 inches to 16 feet and are located on all three levels of the theater. The organ was once water-powered, and was electrified in 1903. The annex area was built in 2007 when an elevator was installed to accommodate accessibility issues. You can see the original outside stand stone walls. Many windows were incorporated as the annex faces north. The black dress in the display case belonged to Bertha Tainter and is a maternity and mourning dress. Bertha was pregnant with Louis when Julia and William, Andrew's children from his first marriage, died within 30 days of each other. The fan is an ostrich plume fan and was a wedding present for Fanny. On the second landing, the chair on the left was Bertha's sewing chair, and the other chair was purchased by the Tainters on their Orient travels. The photo is of the officers of the Grand Army of the Republic. The balcony area provides a closer view of the intricate stenciling on the ceiling and gives the audience members a different perspective of the theater and performances. The modesty curtain in the balcony is original material, made of Italian velvet with threads of rose woven through. The curtain's original intent was to keep the audience and performers downstairs from seeing the ladies' exposed ankles as they sat in the balcony. The photo outside of the pastor's study is of the Reverend Henry Doty Maxson, the first Unitarian minister at the Mabel. He died of a cerebral hemorrhage at the age of 39, three years after the tainter was opened. Entering the pastor's study, you will see his roll-top desk, where he sat and wrote, all of his sermons. The blackboard on the wall is the handwriting of Henry Doty Maxson. This is a Hindu saying and part of his last sermon that he wrote and delivered on Sunday morning. The fireplace is called a radiant heat source or reflective fireplace. 
Stones and bricks were heated in the furnace downstairs and carried up and put into the opening. Heat then radiated from all of the surfaces. It is a ceramic inlay with cherry wood. The mantle is carved like the bow of a ship. A tribute to Captain Tainter. He was captain of the Chippewa Falls, a riverboat owned by Knapp, Stout, and Company. The gallery in the boardroom were once known as the Grand Army of the Republic Room. Andrew felt that it was important for the men to have a gathering spot when they returned from the war. The two military paintings were painted by Jacob Miller to honor those men. Heading back down the stairs to the main entry, we find the portraits of Andrew and Bertha, also painted by William Cogswell. Mabel's memorial window contains four panels and includes her birth and death dates. This window was created by Tiffany Glass. Heading down the stairs to the lower level, we see portraits of Lincoln and Grant that were painted by William Cogswell. He also painted a matching pair that currently hang in the White House in Washington, D.C. The lower level houses the studio, which used to be the young men's gathering space. It can be used for community art classes, displays, and is a warm-up area for the Menominee Theatre Guild performances. The theatre hosts national and regional performers, including the Menominee Theatre Guild and their four productions each year. The building can be rented out for private events and is available for tours. The Tainers would be proud that their mission has been carried out over 130 years.